I want you to notice how the NLT and the NRSV, which is the new Revised Standard Version, translates Isaiah 53, 8, the first part of it. Here's the NLT translation, the New Living Translation. Unjustly condemned, he was led away to be executed. Now I want you to understand, the emphasis is on the first word, unjustly, not condemned. He was condemned, that's a fact. But the emphasis is unjustly condemned. He was led away to be executed or crucified. Here's the NRSV translation. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away to be crucified. By a perversion of justice. Now, the reason those two versions translate it this way is because they recognize that Isaiah was using a figure of speech, a hendiadus, and these translations are what scholars call a dynamic equivalence translation. You see, there are three basic categories of Bible translations. I have people come to me all the time. They say, Pastor Allen, what translation of the Bible should I get? I can't tell you that. What do you want? Well, I don't know what I want. Which is the best? I can't tell you that. And let me explain why. There are three categories of Bible translations. Now, if you want to get technical, there's four, but we're going to look at the three major, major ones, all right? So the first category is called formal equivalence translations. Some call them literal translations because they're word-for-word -word translations. The King James Version, the New American Standard, the ASV, the ESV, etc. All of those are word-for-word -word translations. So when they take the original language, whether it's Greek or Hebrew, they take one word and they go, okay, we need one word. Sometimes we'll fudge and we'll use two words, but we don't really want to do that. So we take what this word means in the original Greek or Hebrew, and we try to find a word in English that means the equivalent, the very same. And sometimes that's tough to do. The King James Version, the New American Standard, those are the ones normally that most Christians use if they want a word-for-word -word translation, also known as a literal translation. All right? The second category is called the dynamic equivalence translation. The translations in this category are thought-for-thought -thought translations. They're not word-for-word -word translations. If it takes three words to translate this one Greek or Hebrew word, they're going to use three words. If it means taking words out or putting words in or, or maybe even putting in five or six words, we're going to do that because their goal in translating it is to do a thought for thought. Everyone with me? All right. There are translations like the NLT, the NRSV. In fact, when we were encouraging people to read the one-year Bible, and even I do this, I read it in the NLT because what I want is I want to get uh, a thought for thought. What was the reader or what was the original writer trying to say? All right. And then the third category is the mediating translation philosophy. It combines the two. The NIV falls into this category. Sometimes it's a word for word. Other times it's a thought for thought. Many of you like the NIV and the reason you do is because it's kind of in between the two. But my point is this. The NLT and the NRSV recognize the figure of speech that Isaiah is using. And they translate the meaning of that figure of speech rather than translating it word for word. To them, it is more important that you understand the meaning of this verse than it is that they got it word for word. Yeah. The ASV, the ESV, the King James Version, and the New American Standard, they don't translate this figure of speech because they're meant to be a literal translation, also known as a word-for-word -word translation, and they just expect you to know that it's a figure of speech. And if you don't recognize it that it's a figure of speech and you don't understand what it means, that's just too bad. To them, translating the verse word-for-word -word is more important than you understanding what it means. You know, people get all upset because sometimes I'll use the NLT or I'll use the NRSV. And you want to know why I do that? Because I translate, especially in Greek, I'll translate it from the original language. 
And then I'll go and say, you know what? This really expresses what this means. And I'll have people just write me nasty letters. You need to use the King James Version. And I, I can tell just by the way we get into this conversation, they don't have any clue as to what the King James Version is saying. It's word for word, but the King James Version doesn't care whether you understand figures of speech. It doesn't care whether you get the meaning. It just wants to stay true to the literal translation by trying to be word for word. Does that make sense, people? Personally, I study with a word for word. Why do I do that? Because I can translate. And because I can translate, I know, well, that's a figure of speech. I'll look that up, go in, do my studies, and you know, nine times out of 10, I'll come to that understanding. But when I come up here to teach, I'm gonna give you the translation that's closest to the meaning of the verse. Was that good to know? So what translation do you need? I don't know. What do you want? You want a word for word, but you don't understand half the time what it's saying? Use the King James Version, the New American Standard. You want to know what it means, but every once in a while they'll get it wrong because they think they know what it means, but they don't. Use the NLT. 